Good evening everyone and welcome to Sugar and Crumbs. My name's Tracy Mann from Tracy Mann Cakes and I'm here this evening to do another cake with you. I'm going to do a lily themed cake tonight, lilies and butterflies, that's the idea. We're not going to write anything tonight, we're going to keep the cake quite generic so you should be able to adapt it according to whatever it is that you want to do. If you want to make it a Mother's Day cake or birthday cake or anything else then you will be able to do that as well. And so Kelly has returned from the film set. So Kelly is with me this evening. Say hello, Kelly. Hello. <laughs> so Kelly is back. Um, so if you would like to ask any questions during the evening, then do please let Kelly know she is here tonight. Charlotte's at home. We've got Kelly here tonight instead, haven't we? Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> She's fine. <laughs> So she's busy tapping away as she is. She's very quick at all that stuff, much better than me anyway, that's for sure. Um, so yeah, Kelly's here tonight. So we're going to have a go at icing this cake. We're going to ice it in a nice pale blue colour. I'm also going to use a new paste that's come out called... Well, I've forgotten what it's called now, something like Satinara, I think. I think it's got a funny name, Satinara, does that sound right? Anyway, I got sent some samples, as did Carol, and I think some of you potentially may have already got some as well. So I'm going to have a go. I've never done this um, yet, so this will be interesting to see what it's like. I've needed a colour through it earlier today, and it feels very nice. So um, I'm going to cover the cake with that. So if it goes wrong, we're going to blame the sugar paste, not me. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be fine and that's what we're going to be doing. So we're going to cover this cake with this um, satinara uh, paste, we'll do that. And then we're going to do a little bit of cake painting as well and then I'm going to show you some really nice butterflies uh, toppers that I've got that I'm going to put on as well. We're going to bling the cake, well we're not actually using any silver balls tonight. I know get the flags out but we will not be using silver balls tonight um, because this is more sort of a um, bit like the one I did last week, felt on the vintage side rather than too much bling. So we're going away from the silver balls for the moment and we're going to use some other things instead so hopefully it should be okay uh, i'm sure it'll be absolutely fine and we will get through it with no problem at all won't we kelly mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> mm -hmm. she's concentrating she's reading the messages right okay so we're going to get started um i have got the paste that i've already dyed we're also going to make some royal icing using whipping it up and we're going to do that first because that's normally what uh, i make a mess with absolutely everything so we will do that first and uh, get that out the way ready so carol sells a product on sugar and crumbs called whipping it up let me take this down because we know who i am um <laughs> carol sells a product on sugar and crumbs called whipping it up um, it's used for lots of different products. I was going to look around for a bag, which I thought I had earlier, but I've tipped it out, Kelly, because I made the royal icing. Of... Oh, no, I've got one here. I've got one. That's fine. I've got one here. There we go. Da, da, da. This is whipping it up. So whipping it up is icing sugar with egg white powder already in it. And you can do lots of things with it. Carol does lots of demos on here, which are always worth watching. Uh, Swiss meringue buttercream, mousse meringue, pavlova, shortbread. I think I've seen her making fudge and all sorts of things. And royal icing. So royal icing is what I'm going to be doing with this. So we're going to make some royal, royal icing up so we can do a little bit of piping on this cake as well. And we can then, um, so I'm going to show you that quickly. Now I've made up half a bag. So these come in 500 gram bags. So if you wanted to make this all up as royal icing, you would add in your <laughs> 70 grams of water. For a whole thing. For the whole thing. Yeah. And I've weighed up 35, which is half a packet. So 250 grams of ice of whipping it up and 35 grams of water because I have done it wrong on a live before and I've been very careful that I haven't done it wrong this time. So that's what I've done um, and I'm going to add that together. So I've got my electric food mixer ready as well because I'm going to move my overhead camera up a bit higher because basically it's my phone and it normally gets completely covered in ice and sugar <laughs> and I'm sure it won't work at some point anyway right so um let me turn the camera down so you can see what's going on it might actually help if I move that the way first there we go so there's our icing sugar or our whipping it up and what we're going to do is we're going to add 35 grams of water straight into the mix and then in order to avoid Kelly, can you just pass me a palette knife, please, from behind you? Thank you. Thank you. So in order to avoid this completely and utterly ruining my mobile phone, I'm just going to give it a little stir. You don't need to do this. It's just because my phone is directly above us. And uh, the minute I switch the food mixer on, it's going to be showered in icing sugar. I'm just going to point out as well, I have got blue hands at the moment. See? So... <laughs> 
I've been um, dying. Well, basically, the blue, the blue blue dye decided to explode all over me this afternoon. So, yeah, I do have unusual coloured hands today. It'll come off eventually, but it's not going to come off in time for the live, so never mind. So when you mix whipping it up, you don't need to do this. As I say, I'm just trying to preserve my phone from too many clouds of icing sugar by just starting the mix off. Just giving it a rough mix to start with. There we go, that's a little bit better. And then I'm going to take my electric whisk, which is wrapped around the smidges. Let me move that out of the way. And we're going to start mixing this. So you'll see straight away. Now this one is, what flavour did I weigh out, Kelly? White chocolate and raspberry. Okay, so we're going to give that a bit of a mix to start with. I always find if you're making broil icing, the best thing to do is to make it, if you're making it with whipping it up, is make it and then use it straight away. So that's why I tend to do mine on the line, because I find it's at its best when I've just made it. So we're going to mix it up for sort of two or three minutes and see it changing. Now whipping it up can be quite yellow, I hope they can hear me. <laughs> whipping it up can be quite yellow, so if you want it to stay white when it dries, you'll need to add a little bit of white powder or super white or some white food colouring just to make it stay white. I'm not too worried actually tonight. Right, so that's my royal icing done, nice and straightforward. Um, so yeah, this is a half bag mix. You can make up smaller sizes, you just need to do a bit of calculation on that just to um, just uh, lower your water count and your icing sugar count. So I'm just going to put my royal icing into, well I've got my lasagna dishes here, which is a glass bowl with a plastic lid, which will stop it drying out because you don't want to leave your royal icing out. I'm going to give this straight to Kelly, who's going to put it in the sink for me. Thank you, Kelly. Good girl. And then I'm just going to pop this plastic lid on top, and that will stop then whipping it up, drying out. So that's all ready. Nice to have that ready for when we're ready to stick things down. I'm basically going to use, I'm going to do a little bit of piping, but I'm going to use it mainly tonight just for kind of holding things in place, really. That's what we're after. So let's get on with the cake. So tonight, Where's my tape measure? Here we go. I've got one <laughs> to rescue here. So tonight, I'm going to put you onto this camera for a second. We have got a seven inch by four inch cake. Now you can see that I've already put some um, ganache on it. It is a straightforward, I'm trying to think what I made actually, or what other sweets except. Oh, it's chocolate. Is it chocolate, this one? Yeah. Are you sure? Well, I saw the box. It could well be chocolate. Um, anyway, it is chocolate, we think, <laughs> with some buttercream and then white chocolate ganache over the top, which we've done and it's been in the fridge and that's been uh, set. So it's now ready for piping. But because it's dry, the first thing I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to paint some water onto the cake so that it's got something to stick to. So I'm just going to paint this on first. So it's very important I cover absolutely every bit of this cake because if it's dry anywhere then the sugar paste has got nothing to stick to and because it's got nothing to stick to you're more likely to get an air bubble. So I'm going to make sure I've painted the whole cake first. There we go. So just going to go round the cake just carefully in order. I didn't actually do this that long ago so hopefully it's okay. Um, I was running a bit behind today. Normally I get this done first thing in the morning, but I didn't actually get this done till mid-afternoon, so um, all being well, it should be fine anyway. Just pop it in the fridge and that'll soon set it. So, as ever, this cake will be going off to the hospital. So, no Kelly, you can't have any. <laughs> Not this week. 
Okay, now it's not actually stuck to the board, this cake. It's actually on a board, so it's loose on here. I see it's moving around. So I will be taking this off and covering the board once I've done the cake itself. We'll get that first. The board's just down to kind of help me out a little bit here. So we're nearly all the way around. Yeah, I'm back at the start again now. There we go. Right, because I've been throwing water everywhere, I'm just going to get a little bit of um, just get a bit of kitchen roll and stop this. There you go. I don't want pools of water everywhere. That's not helpful to me. Right. Okay. So we're now going to be rolling out the sugar paste. So I have got um, satinara, which actually is white. Um, but I've dyed it pale blue. Where are we on camera here? So I've dialed this in pa uh, dyed this in pale blue. Um, just a normal blue gel, nothing particularly odd. Um, and it's a lovely pale, pale blue colour. And that's what we're going to be using for this tonight. So let's go on to the other screen. There we go. I haven't got my pink board down tonight because um, I'm going to be painting with cocoa butter, which involves um me using a candle and i'm always a bit frightened i'm gonna do something naughty to the pink um <laughs> the pink board when i'm live with fire so I, I haven't got it out tonight we're gonna we're going to just do it straight onto this um white clean tablecloth we're going to use that instead so i have got a bit of icing sugar down to roll out on i'm just going to give this a bit of a knead first to get it going so i've not used this before so we're going to see how this pans out I probably didn't tell you that, Kelly. Huh? I didn't tell you I hadn't used this sugar paste brand before. Oh, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. It feels very nice, I'm sure. As I say, we'll give it a go. Satinara. That's a bit of a name, isn't it? There we go. Right. So we're just going to start rolling out. So if we want to get it into a circle, we've got to do a quarter turn each time. I'm sorry, my camera's probably going to shake a little bit because it's attached to the table. I only ever use a small pump spray bottle for water. Am I applying enough water to buttercream? Uh, to the buttercream? I would have. Well, yeah, well if it's sticking, that's all right. As long as it sticks, that's fine. Yeah. We had a spray thing, Kelly. It'd be going everywhere, wouldn't it, knowing us? <laughs> right, this feels very nice, actually, this new paste, I have to say. It's certainly rolling out very nicely. Satinara, apparently it's called. Now, it was white. I have dyed it, so I don't think it comes in lots of colours. Um, this was white. But it does feel very nice. I thought we'll give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? <laughs> it doesn't work. I've got more sugar paste I can leap for if I need to. So we'll try it out and see what happens. So this is just um, blue, just a blue gel that I used and just made it pale. Nothing particularly odd or fancy, just a normal blue gel. Just made it pale blue. It's a bit of a theme developing here, Kelly, because I'm pretty certain one of the other cakes I did was pale blue. <laughs> pale blue is my favourite colour, so it's starting to show up a bit more now. But on a live as well, it's quite nice because you can see what we're going to do a bit better as well. There we go. Right. A little bit more because this cake is quite tall plus I'm not too sure what this paste is going to be like when we put it on because I've not used it before it feels okay I don't think it will tear it doesn't feel where do you get the paste I think Carol's got it it's a brand new one it's only just come out literally just come out um, and Carol was talking about it um, on a live a few weeks ago so I suspect it's probably on there so this is my smedger my famous smedger that keeps coming out so we just go round and round on the paste just flatten it off so we've got no air bubbles that's a good start so just go round and round so you work the paste on the table not on the cake all right and that just stops you can press a bit harder then you see there we go 
like so. And then what we're going to do is we're going to, oh, I'm going to do this off this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take this off the turntable just for a second. Because the last thing I want is this spinning around, driving me crazy. So that will not be good. Let's just move a few little bits out of the way. Right. Okay, so what we'll do, I've just taken it off the turntable for a second. So we're going to put the ball, the rolling pin down this way. And we're going to roll this back, pick it up go towards the cake and then put it straight over the top like so. Right, let me bring my chair up so I can do this. And then we're going to just take hold of the smedger and we're going to just get all the air out on the top first before we start doing the sides. So you want to make sure there's no air. It feels okay. Okay, and then what we'll do is we'll start going down the sides and we'll just very carefully take it down. Bit by bit, so you don't get any air bubbles in it. So don't just go straight to the bottom, just go bit by bit. I stand up here actually, am I leaning over the camera and I'm okay? So I'm using the side of my hands, my lovely blue fingers, um, <laughs> the, blue, the blue gel did explode this afternoon all over me, but that's okay, it, I don't mind, I don't mind. Okay, so down we go. Okay. I'm going to go round. Nearly there. I'll put it back on the turntable in a minute. Make life a bit easier for me. Well, it feels very nice. I have to say, this paste, it does feel very smooth. So, yeah, 10 points so far. It hasn't torn on the edges, so that's another good plus point with it. I don't want that happening either. Right, let's get the turntable back in again. Make my life a tiny bit easier. Let's pick this up. There we go. And then we'll just go round like so. Again, just make sure your air bubbles are all out. Go round like that. The lovely smedgers. This is a smedger, just in case you don't know what that is. So it's a straight edge smoother with a bottom that sits on the cake board. And then you just use it up against your cake. And you'll see what it does there. You see it pushes the sugar paste into the gap itself. So I might find this quite quite a good tool actually. As long as it's down far enough in the first place. Okay, now I think last week or the week before I did it in one go. I'm not going to do that tonight. I'm going to actually do the board separately because I haven't stuck it down. So let's get this going first. So it gets right in so you get the square edges there. It's quite good for this. There we go, so we've got it in that far. And then what we'll do is we'll use one of my favorite plastic side scrapers, da, 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 and then we'll cut the sugar paste away from the edge. So this is better than a knife, I think. It's less, it doesn't damage the boards. It cuts just the same as a knife. There we go. And then we'll just take that out of the way, like so, there we go. Now I need that for the, um, I need that for the board, so that's okay. We'll just keep that to one side and then we'll go round again. Now I've got two of these actually. Um, I'll tell you why, because then it stops the cake moving. I can put one there and one there and then I'm not um, fighting with my hand on this side. So if I didn't have this one, I'd put my hand here, then what I'm actually gonna be doing is imprinting my finger marks and everything else into the cake. And then as you're going round, all you're doing is making more and more marks. So if you've got two of these, then it stops you from making any more marks. That's why I do it. This is a very nice paste, I have to say. Very nice, very impressed. 
I did tell them I was using it today for the first time. And I didn't fancy a practice. I thought, no, we'll just go for it and see what happens. <laughs> oh, I'll take a risk, it'd be fine. If you want to straighten your edges up a little bit, you can just push these in towards the smedger. Does Carol have smudges? I don't know. They are on my website. I'm not entirely sure if Carol does or doesn't, but they're on my website somewhere. Um, I just love them. It was only I put them on because I started basically icing more cakes live and people started asking about them. So I thought, well, I better show you what they are. Um, but they are lovely. Right, I'll just go back. I'll go for a rounded edge tonight, but we're just going to keep it nice and use the palm of your hand. Don't use the fingers. Keep your fingers off. Okay, palm of your hand and smoothers. Okay, it's a little bit of um, what they call elephant skin on the side here. Just run over it with the palm of your hand and that will disappear. Okay. And then when you move on to do the board, that gives you then an opportunity just to keep an eye on it and just see if there's any air bubbles that appear because sometimes they do. This is called Satinara. Oh, I just added an extra N. Did you? Yeah. What did you call it? Santranara. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking of Frank Sinatra. Satinara. Satinara, that's it. Yeah, this is the name of this paste. Carol's, I'm sure, has got this. Um, but if she doesn't have the smedges, then they are on my website. Um, because I think they're great. I do. I really rate these. They're nice and easy to use. You can't go wrong because they're on the board, you see. So they're great. Satinara. I think um, Carol had some. Um, but it's brand new as I say it's only just come out so if you can't get it tonight I'm pretty certain it will appear in the next week or so so just take note of the name and watch watch and wait because it's coming I'm sure of that there we go that's fine we're happy with that right now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this from the board so I'm just going to push that that way Put my fingers under there and I'm just going to move this onto the table because what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cover my board. I'm just going to do it in one tonight. So I'm just going to take hold of my water and well I've seemed to have covered my cake okay. I'm quite happy with that. So I would say for cake covering it's okay. It is softer um, but it's, it feels nice. So I didn't, did I microwave it? Yeah I did microwave it a little bit earlier when I was putting the colour in. That's because it's so cold at the moment. I can't bear it because sugar paste is like that. Right, so let's now roll out another circle. So we're back up here again. And we'll just use what we've got left to do the board. So I'm going to do it in the same colour. And we're just going to roll that out. It is quite soft, but it seems fine. And we're going to pop some icing sugar down. I'm like the queen of icing sugar so <laughs> yeah there's always plenty of icing sugar around when I'm doing cakes. There always has been. It's a habit. I think I'm going to find it quite difficult to break. And no pink board because I'm using cocoa butter with fire tonight and I was worried I'm going to damage it so I've I've um, left my pink board out of the way. I'm, I don't want to do anything to it. So I'll be doing it without tonight. So we'll just roll this out. I'm all for covering boards, as most of you know now. If you cover your board, it just has a much more professional finish. Just looks that much nicer. Let's have a little look, see how we're getting on. Look at that. We're there already. So we'll just take hold of our smedger again. What size cake was it? It's a seven by four. And how much of the paste did you use? Well, I had, uh, I think I've used... How big were those packets? Can you remember? Uh, were they kilo packs? I think, yes, they were. I've used about one and a half kilos, roughly. So it's quite a tall cake, you see, and I want to do the board as well. So about one and a half kilos, I would say, is about right. Don't forget to like and share tonight. I have to remember to say that because I always forget um, while I'm doing this. And there you go. So that goes on like so. And we'll just take this again, just run it over it just to make sure it's nice and smooth, which it appears to be. And then what we're going to do is take hold of our 
plastic side scraper and we're just going to, I'll have to go onto the other camera for this one, just pick this up and then using the plastic side scraper you can just, you treat it like a pie, just go round like this and just clear the sugar paste off the board. There you go, like so. No knives, no damage. Done. How about that? That's easy, isn't it? There we go. All right, let's put that down here. We'll go back to that camera again. So we're going to stick our cake down now with the whipping it up that we made earlier. I'm just going to put this little bit of um, paste away so I don't end up um, it drying out. So we don't want it drying out. Kelly, can you pop that in the sink for me, please? You got it? There you go, thank you. Okay, and that water, I'll leave that there actually, that'd be okay. I just don't want to end up knocking it, which is completely possible with me. Right, so I'm just going to put some whipping it up on here just to hold my cake in place. My cake's actually on a cake board, the same size as the cake, so um, it's sticking that to that, basically. That smells very nice. I've got a little bit of water on my cake. How annoying is that? Okay, never mind. Right, let's bring this forward. A smidger. Right, let's take this off the table. Satrina. Sorry? Satrina. No, Satinara. Satinara. <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Satinara is the paste mum is using. Satinara. Right, I've got to find the middle of this now. Don't put me off. Right, so that's going on like so. There we go. I know it's got a funny name, isn't it? Satinara. It's very nice though. Frank Satinara. Frank Satinara. No, that's Frank Spencer. No, Frank Sinatra. Oh, Frank Sinatra. Oh. <laughs> Who's Frank Spencer? Oh, Kelly. Honestly, what are you like? Right, so I'm just going <laughs> to... Oh. I'm going to have to show you Frank Spencer is. I'll find him on Netflix for you. Um, right, now let's get some... I'm just going to... Okay, so we have got the cake on. Like so. Now, okay, let's go on to another camera. Where is... There it is. Okay. Okay, so I'm still here. <laughs> so we've covered the cake. And now what we're going to do is we're going to emboss onto the cake. So now I've done this several times live. And I did last week, I embossed um, another flower, couple of flower cutters together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a new cutter that belongs to me because I've now started getting into cookie cutter design in a big way. It has become my new thing. Um, and we're going to use this cutter here. Okay, now this is called a lily cutter and that's what I'm going to use to be able to show you what to do. Kelly's just put a link up so you can go and have a look, but I have got very much into designing cookies at the moment. Now my Royal Ices, so I've got a whole group of people doing Royal Ice course at the moment, will have seen this before and they will know that I've been using it for cookies, but I'm also now going to show you how to use it on a cake and we're going to paint it up so you're going to be able to see something a little bit different. Um, now let me show you what the cookies look like. I've got to be very careful actually because <laughs> one of my cameras was flat when we turned up tonight. <laughs> And I completely forgot, so I'm, I've got wires running everywhere tonight, which means I'm having to lean over things and try not to sort of take everything apart. So there we go. Right, let's have a little look at these. Actually, I'll bring my camera down now because we can see that down a bit further. So my cookie cutter makes these lilies, which you may or may not have seen on Sugar and Crumbs Cake Community. I've had these up here. So this is what it looks like. So on here, the cookie cutter has got some indents. Um, it might help if I was on camera. It um, has got some indents, which helps us to then be able to pipe these that we can then make. So these are actually biscuits, you can see. Look on the other side there. And what we're going to do is I'm going to use the same cutter, but I'm going to use it onto a cake so that you can then um, emboss with it. And then we're going to be able to paint these lilies. So they're very pretty, um, but we're going to do a similar effect. We're not going to do royal icing because these are royal icing we're going to be able to just paint them instead. Okay, so we're gonna move these out of the way. Over there, and we're gonna bring the cake in, like so. Actually, we might take the camera back a bit. 
There we go. We don't want it on top, so we're going to provide there, everybody. Apologies for that. Right, there we go. Right, so what we're going to do now with the cookie cutter here, because when you make cookies, they're a lot thicker than what you would do with sugar paste. If I turn it over this way and press it down, this marking here, which marks on the cookies um, to know where to pipe is shallower than the actual cookie itself. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the other side, so not the side with the lines. Is that right, Kelly? You're yes. just going to use it the reverse way. How I'm going to use it, it yeah. Cookie. So that's the flat, yeah, it's the reverse way of the cookie. All right, so it's going to be there. We're going to do it. We decided Turn to Turn it upside down. Turn it upside down. There we go. Right, so we've got that in place. There we go. And then all I'm going to do and I not have it in the middle because I can't bear things that are in the middle, it needs to be off centre. So I'm just going to press it down, but I'm going to really focus on pressing in these middle bits here to make sure it marks. And I have a little pick up, see what it's doing. There we go. So you can see some of the shapes are on there already. I'm going to just put that down again. And you can feel it kind of slotting back in. So if you need to do it again, just press down there a little bit more. Okay, and also actually it stops it going right into the cake. If we turn it the other way, you're going to find it's going to go right into the cake and I don't want that. That's definitely not what I want with this. Okay, now we are going to switch to the other camera again. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to do one lily on the top and then we're going to do, I'm going to move that camera over a little bit. I'll save me having to move it so far. Hold on. There we go. Um, we're then going to do one there and we're going to do one on this side here. So again, we're going to take the lily cutter again. So that's going in there. We're going to put it approximately about there. Where's my smedger? And we're going to just kind of rock it. Okay. So we get some markings, which we are getting. Just take your time with this. Make sure you get it all out there. There we go, that's fine. You can see that just about. If you can't see it, it will appear when I start painting. We might start moving the cameras in a bit. It's just we dare to do it at the moment because it's plugged in. <laughs> okay, so that's that. Now, we're going to paint the lilies, which are also mainly on the overhead camera so you can see it as best as you possibly can. And then what we'll do is we're going to add some other decorations later on, a little bit of piping and all these bits and pieces. But let's see how that comes together first. They're all on Frank Spencer completely. I just, oh, maybe <laughs> I'm going to Google him. Well, I was definitely showing you Frank Spencer, Kelly, I'm sure of that. Right, okay, so we're going to paint this and what we're going to do, I'm going to put that there. We're going to do this with cocoa butter. So it means we're going to need a heat source, which is what we've got here. Okay, let me move this out of the way. And I use one of these, which is a chrome food warmer. Okay, and it has in the middle there a tea light and that's what creates the heat. So that's going to be lit, that will come up, it will get hot. And then my metal paint palette will then sit on top, which will in turn melt the cocoa butter, which is here. And we will then mix it with dusting colours. That's quite a lot to take in, I, I'm sure of that. So let's just run through it again. Now, if you don't have a chrome food warmer, you can just use a bowl of boiling water. So you just go and get yourself some boiling water and then put it into a glass bowl and then put either a, a plate or a metal paint palette on top. As long as it gets hot, then it will mean the cocoa butter is melting. That's the whole purpose. If you use boiling water, you will need to change the water roughly every 20 minutes or so, something like that. Um, I've, I've just read that comment you've written, Kelly Man. <laughs> <laughs> I have shown you, Frank Spade, and maybe it was Charlotte. I've definitely shown one of you. Anyway, so we're now going to light this candle. And we're going to put the metal paint palette on top and we're going to take hold of some of this cocoa butter here and we're going to just pop that onto the side there. We'll put a couple of bits in. You don't use much of this. It's very, just a, literally a few little bits. It's a room temperature store. You don't put it in the fridge. You just store it at room temperature. It's just a little bag. Um, just keep it away from light and heat and smell, the usual things with cake and then you'll be fine. No problem with it at all. Okay. Yeah, it was in Phantom, Kelly. Right, so colours for this evening, we have got uh, blush pink. And now I'm going to put that on straight away. So I'm just going to tip a little bit of that onto the palette. We have got white, which I'm going to, this is a new one, isn't it? Typical. 
got to just take the label off so I can actually get into it. <laughs> Probably still won't be able to get into it, Kelly. Right, put some white in there. A little bit of white dust as well. Okay. And then we have got spring green, which is this colour here. It's a very nice colour, very bright. So pop that there. And we have got brown. Now I've also got black, but I may not use it. So I'm not going to put it on just yet. And I'll show you the reasons behind that later on. But a little bit of brown as well, a tiny bit of brown actually. Then I have got my famous paintbrushes that are all numbered. So when I teach cocoa butter painting, if I haven't said this before already, I do use paintbrushes that have got numbers on them. You probably can't see on this camera, let me come a bit closer. So this is number two and this is paintbrush number three. And what I do is when I say to my students online and we now use paintbrush number, whatever it is, they can then pick up the right brush and then I know that we're on the right track for doing the painting. Now we do most of our painting with paintbrush number two which is the most popular one um, paintbrush three we use but we tend to keep it dry and we use that for a different technique um, paintbrush are these dusts matte they are matte dusts for this project but you can use lusters that's absolutely fine anything like that um, is absolutely fine so what we're going to do now is take hold of paintbrush number two right what I might do, let's go back to this other camera so you can see. This one's got a mind of its own this evening, this camera. Okay, let's see if I can get it over there. Yeah, we'll switch cameras just for a second. There we go. Right. So you can just about see the lily there on top. So we're going to paint it pink. You can get my foot under the table. There we go. Right, so. I'm going to, let's move this across so you can see the cocoa butter, there we go. So I'm going to dip my paintbrush into the cocoa butter here, let's turn this around and I'm going to pick up, let's move that over a second, there we go. I'm going to pick up some of this colour here, the blush pink and start mixing it and then I'm going to pick up some white and I'm going to pale it right down so I want it to be a nice pale pink colour. So into the white to make pale pink. It is a very pale pink colour. All right, so don't make it too strong. This rose colour is quite, uh, not rose, blush pink is quite strong. There is one called rose as well. That's why I'm getting confused. Do you sell the brushes yep. together? Yeah, there is a set of brushes together. Um, for Specifically for my painting courses, yes. And again, they're all on... Find it. They're on... Um, they're not... I can tell you now, they're not on Kate Painting Supplies. It might be because I had to turn them off last week because the paintbrushes were stuck in Ireland. But the paintbrushes are on there, aren't they? But not as a set. Yeah, we had um, paintbrushes all got stuck in Ireland last week. or well, Actually, they were stuck in there for more than a week, so I do need to switch that back on again. Um, so yes, we do normally. But yeah, there are brushes on there, but they're all separate rather than um, as a pack. There we go. Look at that. So nice pale pink colour. Now this is a bit like painting by numbers because everything is marked out for me. So I'm literally just going to follow what I can see. So I'm using paintbrush number two. I'm just going to follow that can around. Can you use gel colours as well or can you only use lustre or like this kind? For cocoa butter painting you need to be using um, dust. Okay, not gel. Are your bit other brushes you use specifically baking brushes, or can you use if you want to regular art brushes? I mean, you can use any brushes, but just don't. Obviously, if you're going to use art brushes, just make sure that you use brushes that you then don't go and put in acrylic or anything else. I mean, I've said to my cocoa butter painting classes, these are your brushes to use specifically for painting cocoa butter and nothing else. So don't spread them around and use them for anything else. Um, and I'm sure they'll probably be fine. The, the ones I've got specifically are to help my students so that I can say to you, please use brush number two, brush number one, and that's the reason why. Um, but you can use whatever you want, it's entirely up to you, as long as they're clean, um, that should be fine. So there we go, we've started painting that already. Okay, so let's turn it round. What we're going to do is we're going to paint these in sections. I've got to just try and get the best light. One you need to be able to see it and one I need to be able to see it as well. So now you'll see 
you probably will be able to see just about I'm not painting right up to the edge I'm actually leaving a sort of bit of a gap which that's okay I don't mind that it just kind of adds to the effect really but I'm going to paint each one of these um, petals individually so I'm not going to so I'm just having a job to catch the light on this one there we go that's better all right, so the more cocoa butter you put in, the thinner the paint. So if you find your coverage isn't great, you need to up the amount of dust that you've got in. I would avoid gels. I would stick with dusts. It's much easier. Uh, gels are not ideal for this. You want to be using dust. Dusts are quite cheap. They're not horrendously expensive. And they do go a long way. There we go. Right. Keep going. On this side so this cutter that I've designed has got a little bit of a it's not just a straight cutter you can see that the petals are turning so they look really natural I didn't want a cutter that was just as straight and boring it is actually a really nice shape I say I've been using it mainly for making cookies with my royal icing group um, but now I'm I've taken it and embossed it on a cake and it worked really well this afternoon when I did a little test on some sugar base. So, can you use oil based colours with cocoa butter? Um, I don't know the answer to that. You'd have to try it yourself. I haven't done it. It might, it might work, but I don't know. I'm being honest here because I don't want to say yes, it's brilliant and it works if I've not actually tested it. So, the answer to that question is I don't know. I'm not sure. So, you'd have to run a little test and see see what it does but cocoa butter goes a long way you don't need a lot of it even if you were painting every single day like I do you it takes me still a long time to go through a bag so you don't need tons and tons of it and it's actually once you start one it's quite low cost to do once you've got your brushes and your paint palette and all the other bits and pieces it's actually fairly low cost to do um, the only thing you'll find yourself replacing quite regularly would be the white dust, which you'll probably have to buy a few of those every so often because you tend to go through that one quite quickly. Are you going to bring out more flower cutters? Yes, we've got two more, haven't we? Mm. We are testing every single week at the moment new flower cutters. I am obsessed with them at the moment. Um, so yeah, we've got two more batches to test tomorrow, two completely different designs. So we will be testing those tomorrow. So the answer to that question is definitely yes. This lily one is my first first one that I've been really, really happy with. Really happy with it. Um, and I'm working with this. Um, I found this man in Scotland who's helping me with this. And he's very good at drawing them all up and sorting them out for me. So I've been very pleased with this. So... So this will be our first coat. We're not actually going to paint loads and loads on here. We're just going to make this fairly simple. But it's a bit of a feature flower. So we're painting two of these. Um, but you'll find that you won't need more than that because they're quite big. And don't forget this is a seven inch cake. And say so it's got a very nice shape. This. Now don't put your um, cutters in the dishwasher. All right, please do not put them in the dishwasher because they will not survive, as somebody found out this week. Um, oh, no. Yeah, I know. Um, they're not suitable for the dishwasher. They're just literally washed by hand, soapy water, and that's it. Okay, no dishwashers for this. There we go. Okay, so we've got... Oh, I'm off screen. I didn't look up. <laughs> right, I'm back on screen now again, everybody. Apologies for that. I'm so busy painting, I sometimes forget to actually look at the... Um, the screen right okay so that's that one and then what we'll do is we'll turn it where did I emboss that other one there it is we'll turn it and go onto this screen here right, let's move that out of the way now this will start to show up as I start to paint I don't know how much battery charge we've got on this one Kelly now okay normally we've got things a tiny bit closer but I managed to flatten the battery, or rather I did. I'm saying we, I should say me. You can just about see it. 
I can't quite see what I'm doing, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Whenever I have to do the side painting, I'm sat in the most silly position ever. So I can try and give you the best angle I can. There we go. Now while I'm doing this, the whole time the lily is drying on top and that's what we need to happen. We don't want to be um, over painting it yet, we want it to be dry. So we can do this while we're, do another one while we're waiting. So it's a good idea to do a couple, two or three. You could go all the way around the cake if you want to, but I've kind of got other ideas for that tonight. So can you do brush embroidered effect with cocoa butter as you do with royal icing? Um, I don't know actually. Um, I'm not sure. Yes, probably. I'm not 100% sure though. I don't think you'll get the same layers, but you could try it. That's got to be one of my royal ices, isn't it? I don't know is the honest answer. Again, I'm not going to lie and say I've done it because I haven't. Um, if I've done it, I'll tell you. If I haven't done it, <laughs> then uh, that's different. So we've got two cutters at the moment that are flowers. We've got this one. We've got the tulip as well. That one came out last week. And we've got another one that's in the pipeline at the moment, which we're, we have actually got the sample already. So we're busy testing to see what we can do with it. It's quite exciting, actually. I love it when this sort of stuff turns up. So we've got that to do tomorrow. Let's see how we go with that. Got to get baking, haven't you, Cal? Mm. Get in that kitchen for me. Get making those cookies. Right, I'm running out of paste a little bit, or not paste, paint, so I'm just going to make a little bit more up. Because it's quite a big surface area. They're our feature flower for this cake. Right, I've got to breathe for a second. <laughs> I'm crunched over doing this. Right. nearly there and then what we'll do is we'll give this a minute or two to dry and we'll move on and do a couple of other things while we're waiting I want it to be totally dry I've got to just turn this towards me a second because this one's the petal that's at a funny shape or different angle funny shape is not the right word is it <laughs> different angle so yes I'm rapidly expanding my flour cookies because I'm very into this I've just I've discovered <laughs> and there we go so that's nearly the last one coming up now you can just about see it there you go so I haven't made this up, I've just followed a pattern and then that one comes down like so. There we go. You can always put it back on if you're not sure. Just turn this one back towards me for a second so I can just get this all lined up. There we go. So that's our second one. You could paint these in any um, colour that you like. If you think about lilies, uh, when I did the lily cookies, I mean, orange is a fantastic lily colour. This one, I'm doing a pink with a, um, a more of a pink centre, but you could do them on a white cake and just make them white lilies. Um, just go onto Google and just have a look at what's available because there's so many beautiful lilies that you can literally pick any one that you like. So it's entirely up to you. You can do whatever you want, but that's now going to dry. This one on top has actually already dried dried so we can go back to this one now actually quicker than I thought we could so that's good news so let's move that over and go back onto this camera here right let's move that across so what we're going to do now is we're going to add some shading to this and what we're going to do is we're going to use the same color but we're going to make it a bit stronger and we're going to use another brush to help us um, create that center bit that goes up the middle of the lily so that's what we're going to do so I'm going to take hold of my brush and I'm going to pick up some more of this blush pink color and we're going to make it a bit darker 
We're still not going to make it full strength, we're just going to make it a little bit darker, like that. And then you can see the contrast there. What we're going to do, we'll start on this one here, and I'm just going to literally paint a line like so. I'm going to follow it down, so you see it's not straight. And I'm going to take hold of my dry brush, which is brush number three, and I'm just going to pull that out like so, so I get a bit of an effect on the lily. Do you see that happening? Let's just do that a bit more again, a bit thicker. So follow the shape of your flower. Like so, a bit more there. How are we doing? Yeah, that's okay. I'm going to get down that middle line again. And there we go. You alright, Kelly? Yeah. <laughs> I, it just kept um, it moving me around while I was on your website, and then I came back, and then it was it logged me out of the live, so I had to come back. Okay, so we're now going to follow that one like so. I'm going to do that again. Now you need to do this immediately. There's no point in waiting for this. So you have to do this straight away. I'm just going to blend this out. Okay, like so. And then this one here, uh, what did I do with this one? I started about there. Okay, so I'm starting there and I'm going to come up like that. A bit of a, you see it's not straight. Let's keep it like that and then just blend it through. And go this way. If I need to put some more colour down, I can always put some more colour down. I'll do that again. There we go. Don't forget this is fresh sugar paste, so I haven't had to, this drying overnight or anything. Okay, this will keep changing. You'll be really interested in what happens with this because um, when I first did this, I thought, oh, what's happening here? I'm not sure about this, but actually at the end, it was brilliant. Okay, so we're now gonna take that and go across like so. Again, just pull that through. So what I'm doing at the moment with things is I'm trying to find easy ways or foolproof ways of teaching you some of the flowers. So I've been using lily cutters. Um, I had a new sunflower course that came out the weekend, learning to paint sunflowers. Again, by using um, a patchwork cutter, an embosser as a guide. And then what you're the value of the course then is learning how to blend your colours. So learning how to paint a nice sunflower colour. So you've got your basic shape and then what we're teaching you then is how to do your colours. Let's put a bit more cocoa butter on there, it's getting a bit dry. So there's not only the putting down of the paint, there's also learning about mixing your colours as well, which Kelly is fantastic at. <laughs> She's amazing, absolutely amazing at colour, aren't you Kel? Just the best. Just the best. <laughs> Right, and then this one here, like so. And then we'll take that out, like that. So there we go, you can see it's starting to appear. A bit more to do yet. Always like anything else, it always looks a bit strange at the start, but. Once we get going with this, we'll see what's got to happen to make it work. So just Is it better to leave the fondant to dry overnight and then paint it? It doesn't matter. It depends what you're doing. If you're tracing an image on, you've got to leave it. If you're doing what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. It's okay. It'll be all right. So if you're tracing an image on, you've got to leave it. If you're 
doing what I'm doing, you can get away with it. Okay, right, now what we're going to do is just leave that to dry and we're going to go to the other one. So we're going to switch cameras again. Okay, and we're going to do the same on this one, like so. So again, we'll start down the bottom here, like so, and then we'll just pull that out. down I'm not, I'm not seeing this at a very good angle for me <laughs> right let me sit at a really strange angle now okay so what you need to do is work this through quite quickly because if you leave it um, it'll set and then you'll end up with a line so You've got to make sure when you do this, you blend it straight away, which we're doing with brush number three. Okay. Right, let's go this way. Like so. Again, one more here. This one's getting a bit stripey because I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm just going to turn it towards me a little bit for a second so I can get this right. There we go. I'm sort of sat around the corner from it. I can't really describe it any other way. There we go. Pull that through as well. So if you don't fancy painting with the cookie cutters, you can always make cookies with them. That's the point. So I'm trying to give you dual use of something here so that you can use them either for... Never seen your table so empty. I know. Who said that? <laughs> well, I know it's chaos normally on here. Instead of hidden chaos tonight. Actually, I've got a few bits and pieces behind me so I don't end up getting them damaged because I can't get water on some of it tonight, which will become apparent later on. And that's why there's not as much stuff lying around. Normally it's chaos, as we all know. So I watch Karen's lives and she's just immaculate. I just don't know how she does it. With me, it's just pure chaos. Normally, great cake at the end. Amongst all the, <laughs> amongst the chaos. There we go. That's better. That's better. Right, there we go. I've had a tidy up fairy. I don't know who that is. Not you, is it, Kelly? No. She's as bad as me. Aren't you? It's more likely to be Charlotte. But Charlotte's not here, so... Okay, right, we're going to leave that to dry. So that one's the same as the other one. This one is already dry, almost dry. Not quite, but almost. Yeah, I think we're going to give that a minute or two to dry before we go and move on to do something else while we're waiting. So let's just take this camera up a little bit. This camera's got a mind of its own this evening. All right, let's turn that that way. There we go, that's better. Yeah, as you're right on top of it. There we go. Right, so we're just going to leave that to dry for a minute. Now, whilst that's drying, we're going to put on, we've got some small little blossoms which we're going to put on, and we've also got some butterflies, but we're going to do the butterflies towards the end. We're going to wait for that to dry, and we're going to do the blossoms next. So we need a piping bag, Kelly. If you, uh, do you get a different effect if you leave your royal icing to dry overnight? What, if we do what? Do you need your royal icing to dry overnight? Maybe they mean that. Um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure what the question is. I'm not... Um, royal maybe icing. Maybe the sugar paste overnight, maybe. Maybe the sugar paste, do you think? Is that what it means? I don't maybe, know. Maybe, but if you leave it overnight, would it make a difference? Oh, I see. It might do. I don't know. Uh, I wouldn't have thought so. Not huge amount of difference anyway, but we've not finished yet, so it, it's got more to play for yet. What I'm doing now... Is I'm going through my <laughs> what, my bowl of nozzles. Don't laugh. My bowl of nozzles. We're going to take hold of an adapter. Where's your turntable from? 
um, it's a Wilton one because I used to be a Wilton instructor, so it's a Wilton turntable. Um, we're going to cut that across there like so. We're going to push that into the adapter like that. We're going to take hold of this nozzle here, which is PME nozzle number two. And um, we're just going to pop that over the top just to kind of hold it in place so it doesn't go wandering off everywhere. And we're going to take hold of some of the whipping it up that I've just made and pop that into the bag like so. Don't need to put in huge amounts at any one time, just a little bit is fine. There we go. And yeah, they meant sugar paste, not more. Sorry, yeah, sugar paste. Um, it might do, but I, I doubt it. There we go, just push that down to the end there. Right, now move that over there. The only reason I have my low turntable out on lives um, is purely because, actually Kenny, I need some white sugar paste. Um, so I've dyed it all blue. Um, the only reason I have my turntable out on lives is because it's too high for the um, cameras. Kelly, can you run around the other side and get in that box, please? Because there's white sugar paste in there. Sorry, we're just getting our sugar paste organised. <laughs> the... um, and the camera's on it. Okay, all right, let me see if I've got some more. Hold on. Let me see what I've got. Okay, hold on. Should I just rip open a bag of that? No, you can move it, actually, because there's some... Um... Yeah, move it for a second. Is it on? It's on, but it's on this camera at okay, the minute, so, so we're okay. Cool. Just don't drop it. <laughs> right, we're just having a little move around of things for a minute. Well, we just this fine. one? Yeah, that's fine. That will be fine. Modelling paste, actually, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. No, no modelling paste is absolutely fine. Right, so we're going to use some Saraceno modelling paste, which is what we use. There we go. We're going to use these for, I'm going to come back on a second. So we're going to use some Saraceno. Now Saraceno can be quite tough. So I'm going to just pop it in the microwave. Ten, just ask what, oh sorry. For 10 seconds, just so that it softens up the cocoa butter. Because otherwise it gets so hard. You can't do anything with it, Kelly, turn the light round. <laughs> um, I've gone into darkness. What size nozzle was that that you put in the piping bag? Oh, nozzle two. PME number two. There you go. So this is starting to move a little bit more now. So we're going to just use some modelling paste to do the little flowers that we've got planned for this. So I'll just give it a bit of a need. Sometimes when you buy modelling paste, um, it can seem like a brick and you think, I can't, what do I do with this? It's really, really hard. Um, I just put it in the microwave. That's fine. But don't put it in there for too long. Otherwise, literally, it will disintegrate. So I'm only putting it in for like literally five to ten seconds. Sometimes you open the microwave and think, what is happening in here? <laughs> it's all gone to mush. And we don't want that. So we'll give it a bit of a need to get it going. And let's go back onto the other camera. Okay. Right. Move that out of the way for a minute. So what we're going to do going to pipe around the edge we're leaving the lilies to dry at the moment that's what's happening because before we do anything else to them I want it to be dry because what we're going to need to do is pipe some uh, pipe paint some white lines and we can't do that when it's still wet so we're going to leave that to dry for a second Put that up there let's move the cookies out of the way so I've got some modeling paste just white and we're just going to roll this out my camera might shake for a second. I'll try not to make it shake too much. I've been on a roller coaster. <laughs> Don't need necessarily need modelling paste for this, but modelling paste is lovely. So, and this one is particularly lovely. So, I'm quite happy to be using this. I've got a couple of turntables, and I was talking about turntables. I've got this low one. As I say, I tend to use this one on lives because it's low, and my cameras are are quite low sometimes if I go on to the high one I can't can't get it under the camera so that's why I tend to go for this little one right so we get this quite thin we don't need modeling paste to be that thick we don't need huge amounts of it on it but we need need it fairly thin there we go that's fine we're going to do some little groups of um, flowers I think that was the plan anyway so I've got one of these PME plunger cutters I'm starting to 
get in a muddle now and I'm just going to put that in there move it across the table so that then cuts it and ends up with it in the plunger itself take hold of some icing am I on the cake yes I am I'm just going to put a little blob there take hold of my plunger cutter and just push it straight out over the top and I'm going to take hold of one of my paint brushes I'm just going to press it like that and it will stand straight away so let's do that again so we're just going to do a few random ones over the cake because I've got butterflies to go on yet as well so I don't want to overcrowd it so put another one there so press it down take hold of your paintbrush now the reason we have to do that is because there is no internal plunger in this so it, it, you need to help it to make it stand so that's why we do it like that around this side we'll do another one over here I don't want too many of these but I want enough I can always add a few more later on if I want to and then I'm going to put some around the sides I'm going to change camera okay so take hold of this same procedure on the side what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick all the places that I don't want people to see. <laughs> I'm going to put a flower on it. So if anybody's like, oh, made a mistake there, well, guess what? You're going to put a flower on it. It's as simple as that. So that one didn't come out very well because it moved. Let's do that again. And onto there. Oops, drop that one. Pick that up. Put it on there. And then push it in like so you can see what we're getting now let's go this way do some on this side there we go press that in place make it stand and up here so these are quite quick they don't take very long they stand out more because they're white on blue so you can see them very clearly don't make them too thick because they're not very nice when they're really thick they look better when they're not okay two more okay, put one there and then push that in like so last one down here now what we're going to do then is we're going to whoops put that in there stay right so now we're going to go round and we're going to pipe I'm just get rid of that we're going to pipe I'm trying to tidy up at the same time here look just the middles of these flowers so i'm just going to get my piping nozzle too and just pipe a little white um center there's no silver balls tonight <laughs> they are banned tonight because they won't suit this cake i don't think this is more pastely colors tonight once we put everything else on so i'm just going to go around I have to do it in order because i'll forget one for sure so just literally in the middle like so no silver balls <laughs> resist everybody resist <laughs> I know I'm renowned for them, but tonight they're not making another appearance. They are not happening. OK, so we've gone all the way around there. Now we're going to pipe a border because I can't bear not to. So we're going to just use the same piping nozzle again and just pipe one of our beaded borders that goes round that just fills a few gaps here and tidies it all up. You could put a ribbon on if you want to, if you prefer to do a ribbon, if you don't want to do any piping, that's fine. Other than that, this is uh, nozzle two again without whipping it up. I'm just going to pipe a quick, and it is fairly quick, uh, beaded border going around the outside because I want to try and keep this again quite vintage looking. Could have used the balls inside of the flowers. I could have done, but I don't want to put silver on it tonight because I think it will kill it once we've done this lily. Because we did this the other week, we had this last week, um, Kelly. We were putting on all these silver balls and then we suddenly decided to take them all off. So. <laughs> they were removed <laughs> so no silver balls resist 
I've got some very pretty little pink hearts candy floss sprinkles as well that are quite sweet and we might need those as well we'll see how we go I want to get everything else on that I've got planned first and then we'll have a look and see if we need those or not so there's no wording on this cake so if you wanted to add wording you would just not put quite as many blossoms on so you give yourself a bit of space and then you can put on whatever words. If you use ribbon on the bottom of a cake what would you use to attach it? Royal icing at the back and that's it nothing else you don't need to put royal icing all the way around it just literally a bit at the back and that's it and just put it on. So people make the mistake of putting royal icing all the way around and of course then it comes through your ribbon and you can see it all so don't do that just attach it at the back with royal icing. Royal icing is your friend, uh, it really is, it will stick anything, hold anything to a cake, pipes beautifully, it does lots and lots of lovely things. Okay, so I'll keep going. And we're heading round. One of the nice things is when you can look round the corner and see the piping and know you're not you're not far off finishing. <laughs> you can see what's coming. And we'll keep going. So this is whipping it up for anyone who joined us later on. This has um, been made with whipping it up and water. So I used half a bag, 250 grams, with 35 grams of water. How long will royal icing keep in the fridge? Don't keep royal icing in the fridge, all right? Whatever you do, do not put it in the fridge. Keep it out at room temperature in a glass bowl with a plastic lid or anything with a plastic lid. And it should last a good week to two weeks. But if you put it in the fridge, it will crystallise. So don't do that, okay? Keep it out of the fridge. It will need um, remixing. Probably a couple of times every time you go and use it especially whipping it up so I find whipping it ups at its best if you make it and then use it straight away um, if you leave it overnight and come back the following day you probably will need to just get your electric whisk and just whisk it again so that you can um, get the best out of it that's what I find um, because it separates so all, all the raw icings will separate eventually um, but that's the best way around it okay Right, so nearly all the way around this one. We're going to go back to our lilies. I'm just going to do a bit more painting. And then we're going to come back to the decoration again. I'm just let that set. There we go. Done. Lovely. Right, so we've made it all the way around the edge of that. Now we're going to go back to the other camera so we can see on the overhead again. There we are. Right, let's try and tidy up a bit. Let's get that out of the way. Now, what we're going to do with the lily, I think that actually came to one side, so I'm going to change my mind with that. Okay, so um, in that container there can you see if there's paintbrush in there number one there's quite a lot of paintbrushes that'll do whatever that one is is that one number one yeah how good is that oh fantastic well done, Phil. so we're going to use paintbrush number one which we're going to use to put some um i was going to call them antennae then they're not are they <laughs> stamens we're going to put some stamens on here but i've got to get the green out of this brush because i was painting earlier with it today it's got green in it right Okay, so we're going to mix up some white. So we're going to take our white powder here. So what we need to do is we need to put the colour back to white to be able to paint it a different colour. So I'm going to take hold of some of the white paste, white paste, white dusting colour. And then what we're going to do is we're going to paint the line. Now if you don't want to lean on your cake, if you just hold on to your wrist like so, Put your paintbrush down and then we're going to just paint a line straight up to about there okay let's do that again you won't be able to see it that well but there we go that's it there 
and then we're going to put some lines either side of it we're going to bend them round a little bit like so go do that on the other side it's going to be five in total that one's a bit thick but never mind that's okay it doesn't matter okay like that okay and then we'll do the same on the side one I'm jumping up and down tonight <laughs> okay let's do the same again so straight up the center line and then from there out at an angle And again, straight over the pink. So if this pink is wet, all it does is change the white to pink. So you must make sure this is dry before you attempt to do this. Okay. And then we're going to leave those to dry again for a minute, like so. So we'll just leave that there, if you can see that there. So what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at these fantastic things are just the best thing ever okay so of late i've been getting into a lot of cupcake toppers and we have now got these butterfly wafer paper butterflies that we've got on a sheet so we've got 14 on a sheet um, which we've now started to do some really nice exclusive designs and this is one of them so this is called pastel butterfly so it's a pink and a yellowy color so all I'm going to do, now this is wafer paper, this is not sugar paste, okay. This what is, flying saucers are made out of? What flying saucers are made out of, Kelly, that's exactly that. So the, one of the reasons why I'm, I'm so incredibly tidy tonight, she says, making excuses here, is because if you get these wet, uh, they disintegrate. So I've got to be a little bit careful what I'm doing here. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut round some of these butterflies like so I'm just going to cut that one off because it's driving me crazy there we go they are lovely aren't they they're really sweet and you just cut round them remembering to keep everything very dry so I've done these ones these are lovely they are blue and pink and what was the other colour Kelly pink and yellow they all come on one sheet Kelly will put a little link up for are you are they just... already on the website yeah they are under what mm, at cake toppers just so you can have a little mm. look. Got them? Mmm. That's Kelly's voice. Mmm. <laughs> All right, let's turn that round. You've got 14 on a sheet. You've got two lots on there. Yeah, there is two lots on there. One lot is sugar paste. This is wafer paper. Now be careful. The wafer paper ones are cheaper. They're, they're quite easy to stand. So you're going to just bend them like that. Okay, so these are the wafer paper ones, not the sugar paste ones. Okay. Be extremely careful which ones. The sugar paste ones are heavier and they can be a little bit more difficult to set. I find that these wafer paper ones have been quite good. So I'm just going to take my royal icing and just pipe down the back of them. And then I'm literally going to take my wafer paper and just make them stand. Okay, like so. So I don't want them too standing up, just slightly up so let's do that again you'll see some of these coming up on the sides just need a little bit of royal icing now don't try and stick these with edible glue because it will literally just dis disintegrate it and that is it so it's really important that you don't stick wafer paper down with water or any form of edible glue it must be royal icing okay so we'll go around on this one again. So we've got a, a bit of variety here. So we'll have a go with some of the other ones as well. So these are great for cupcake toppers as well. If anybody's thinking, oh, I could do something with these cupcake toppers as well. They're really, really pretty. They're just something a little bit different. Again, I've just, I've seemed to have slipped into cookies and cupcake topper designs at the moment. <laughs> I'm in a phase <laughs> and I'm painting tomorrow more courses so that's even better good news everybody so back on that again there we go 
Okay, so that's another one of those. So another little butterfly there. Again, just very carefully bend it. If it snaps, it's not really a problem because you can just glue it at the back because wafer paper can snap. Just be careful, just put a little bit of glue on there and then we'll pop, pop that one there. So we'll put this one here and just make it stand. You'll probably get quite a nice effect then when I turn that round, you'll see. Oh, there you go, Cal. Right, let's cut out one of the other ones so we can start picking up some different colours. So there you go, they're all on a nice sheet like that. Just keep them away from water. Okay, and they're totally edible, which is nice because then you don't have to worry about anybody eating anything they shouldn't be eating. They're quite good as well for if you want a little activity with kids and you want to make some butterflies to sit on top of the cupcakes, then you could sit and cut them out, couldn't you? Make some bits and pieces like that. But they are lovely, pretty colours, these ones. But be aware, these are the wafer paper ones, not the sugar paste ones. All right. I've only linked the wafer ones. Okay, because otherwise we get all get confused. And it's not difficult, me included. So there you go, there's the little, let's get that one on there. So that's a nice little, so let's just bend that back there a little bit again. So it doesn't need much. You can, just a little bit of encouragement there. And again, we're just going to put some royal icing on the back there. And then we'll pop that one there. So we've got a bit of a combo going on there, look, you see. So it's not, try and mix your colours up a bit. Don't just stick with the same colours. Can you put the cake in the fridge with the butterflies on? Well, I wouldn't put the cake in the fridge once it's finished anyway. So um, no, don't put it in the fridge. Once your cake's finished, there's no reason to go putting it in the um, fridge. Just leave it out. Only put cakes in fridges to set things like ganache or sometimes buttercream. But once they're actually finished, they're room temperature storage items. So no, you must leave it leave it at um, room temperature. Wafer paper tends to be affected by humidity um, and by water. So if there's any sort of like, you know, if someone touches it and they've got water on their hands, it will disintegrate. It's like the same stuff as Kelly was saying earlier that you use on flying saucers. You know what I mean? The sherbet filled loveliness. Oh, I do like them. Um, <laughs> I've them for years, Kelly. Um, flying saucers. So, yes, yeah, that kind of thing. There we go. Just take it again, just very carefully. Just bend it back. You don't need to go mad with them. So the butterflies are on a sheet. Yeah, there's 14 on a sheet and they are wafer paper. Kelly, put you a link up now. Yeah, I've done the link for the icing ones as well. Okay, so just remember these are the wafer paper ones. Don't get confused. The sugar paste ones are fine. We do do them on sugar paste normally and they're fine. Um, the wafer paper ones are a little bit cheaper. Um, oh, I need to put that in the cocoa butter then. And they stand a little bit easier than the sugar paste ones, which you kind of need to prop up a little bit more. I find these a little bit more, these are easier to deal with. These are the only ones I've got on wafer paper at the moment, but we're working on that. There we go. So just follow it round. Are they liking the cake now? They are. Now it's all coming together. The stuff they put on your tongue at church back in the day. Yeah, that's it. Is it? Yeah, well, it's wafers, isn't it? Wafers and... I don't know. Yeah, it is. I would never got to the point of the wine. No, you didn't. <laughs> Do you like red wine, though, don't you, I Kelly? I <laughs> love red wine. <laughs> oh, dear. Don't start Kelly on the red wine. Right. Okay, round we go again. So there's another little one there. Again, they are really pretty. Okay, so we're just bend that very slightly just ease it you don't need to do that because otherwise you'll end up snapping it butterflies are well that's the size i did measure across there and across there and they were very similar in size they were 4.2 centimeters at the widest point for both even though this one looks bigger they were actually this one was actually um they were the same width so they fit nicely on cupcakes as well as cakes themselves. There we go. Look at that. How are we doing so far? Okay, so a couple more. So 
So there's 14 on this sheet. And when you don't use them or when you've got some left over, you just put them to one side and then put them back in the bag that you've got them in and then just bring them out another time. Just make sure you seal your bag so that they don't get affected by moisture or anything. And then just come back and have another go. Uh, just a bit fun, isn't it? Do they come in other colours? Not yet. This we is, have... We've got some lum more luminous -y type colour ones on sugar paste. So there's a green... Blue, uh, purple and orange. I, think I might have one of those under my desk, actually, which I have. Hold on. So we've got uh, other ones on sugar paste sheets, which, but they're much stronger in colour. They don't suit this cake. They look like this. There we go, you can see I've been hacking away at this sheet. But this is on sugar paste, okay? So this is a different thing altogether. So this is like when you peel back sugar paste to do cake toppers, can you see, like that? Whereas we're using wafer paper, which is a much finer finish, which is the look that I wanted for this cake tonight. So it's it's a different thing altogether. So these are quite strong. You can imagine this on here, probably actually a couple of them would have looked okay, but we were going for more of a pastel finish tonight. So we wanted to do a pastel butterfly. So that's why we've gone for this one. Right, so we've got two more to do. One, this one and the next one. And then that will be all the butterflies on there. I think oh, I might put one on the board actually. So, so you can see why it doesn't need those silver balls, everybody. <laughs> I know we're obsessed with them, but not tonight. There we go. So we'll put, and you can actually have them right on the edge of these cakes as well, and it, it really is standing out. So let's just bend that back a little bit more. So we'll put one more down there. We'll put it side as well, a bit sideways. Now I'll put another couple on, or another one at least on top. And then we'll go back to painting our, our lily. I am just cutting, I'm cutting around the body, but I'm actually just cutting out the antennae. I'm not trying to be clever and cut those out. I'm just getting rid of those. Otherwise I'll be here forever. Is that one? No, that one's got, I've, that one's been rejected. I want this one. <laughs> That's better because this one's going on top. You see, so I want this to be a nice one. So they don't take very long to cut out. I've cut them all out live so you can see how long it takes to do. And I'm not spending a huge amount of time doing it. You can always cut them out in advance. You don't have to leave it to the moment you're doing your cake. You can sit and do this one evening, can't you? And keep them in a bag, ready to roll. There we go. Right, actually I'm just going to turn that bit around there at the end so it's not pointy oops that's better right bend that like so and then we'll put some more icing down the back here right let's have a little look on top here so we're going to have where do we have why don't I put it now oh I shall put it okay I'll put it there okay just hold it up there as well okay right Got a funny feeling I might need one more. Okay, we'll just do one more. I know, I said no more, but I think I might need one more at the top. No. No? no. You say I've done. Yeah, otherwise it's going to take away from the lily. Well, I think it might do as well. How long do the wafer butterflies last? Well, once they're printed and you keep them inside your um, bag, then you should be they should be good for a good, gosh, how long, Kelly? Three or four months, I would say. Just keep them in your bag. They won't go off, they'll be fine. Right, let's go back to painting our lily. So let's go back onto the other camera again. There we go. Right, so let's try and work on the stamen part of this. So we're going to paint these lime green. So we've had to put white down first in order to be able to get to the point where we can paint them a true lime green colour. Because if we paint lime green straight over pink, it's going to look horrible. So we need to take hold of some of the spring green. Marginally off camera here. Move that over a little bit. 
So take some spring green and mix some white into it. I already had some white on my brush, so that's fine. Just add a little bit more because you don't want to use the neat spring green colour. It's too bright. We need to lighten that up a little bit before we go using that. Did Robbie like his paint? He did. He laughed at my YouTube. Didn't I tell you? No. He laughed. Only because I was going on about it. I'm going on about him. Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take the lime green colour and we're going to paint the centre. We're going to breathe occasionally, everybody. And we're going to paint the <laughs> these stamens down here. like so now I'm just going to quickly do the ones on the side I know I'm going to be out of shot but I want to do them while I've still got the green on my brush so just bear with me a second while I just do those otherwise I'll be changing my brush backwards and forwards so that's got a nice true colour okay so that's that done right now let's change colour so just dip that in the cocoa butter and just clean your brush out like that. It's really easy to do. Just dip it in, give it a twist. There we go. Now we are going to do brown. So let's turn that round. And we're going to dip our brush in the cocoa butter, pick up some brown, give that a bit of a mix. And then we're going to make some of those little sort of stamen head things, aren't we? So we're going to do them on four of them and they're like little T shapes. So we're going to just do those like that. Not the middle one. Okay, let's do the same on this one on the side quickly. I'm not going to change the camera angle, it's not worth it. It's done pretty much straight away. Okay, then we'll clean that again. Now, we have got the dots to do on the lily. Now, I've got two options here. You can either do it, um, paint it, or you can do it with an edible pen. Now, I've prepared to do it with an edible pen. If that doesn't work because the sugar paste is still wet, then I will switch over to cocoa butter. So I don't actually know, we're gonna find out in a minute. Um, but what we're going to do as well is just take some white. I'm just going to do three little white dots together just for the stamen center there, which I forgot to do earlier, we'll do that now. Okay, the same on this one down here. We'll just do exactly the same. Okay. So, edible pens, here we go. So this is a Sugar Flare edible pen. It's black, it's a licorice colour. It's got two ends, it's a thick end, and like so, that's the thick end actually, and that's the thin end, like so. Now I don't actually know what this is going to do, so let's have a look on the side one first, because then if I mess the side one up, it won't matter, will it? <laughs> not as much as I'll miss the other one up so with the cookies you can normally just press it down actually it's not too bad like that or the other alternative is you can paint with cocoa butter let's have a look at that Kelly yeah you happy with that mm -hmm. okay so that's fine now we get less as we go out towards the outside edge. There we go, like so. Now you're not gonna see this very well. You'll see it better on the other camera. So what I'll do is I'll do this one fairly quickly and then you'll see the other one much clearer on the other camera. So but you can see then how quick it takes to do. It doesn't take very long. Kelly? Yeah. Yeah, Kelly. I love how you keep turning it around. Well, I'm giving you Kelly approval. You sat in front of me, you see, so you can see. And then on here. And then I say I'll do the top one under the other camera. And you'll be able to see that nice and clearly. So you can see the sort of side one at the moment. And you'll get a better view in a second. So you can kind of push it into the sugar paste. Okay, right. Okay, let's go on that top camera and have a look at how to do this. So the other one's done. 
So all we're going to do is take our pen and very carefully, is my hand in the way? Yes, it is. Okay, I'll try and move it so that it's sideways slightly. So there's usually a bit more of a gathering of dots in the middle. And then as it comes down towards the outside edge, they get thinner and less of them. So you can paint this with cocoa butter if you want to, or you can use an edible pen, which is what my oil ices have been using. Okay, can you see that? And paint between the stamens. turning into a lily now, yes, thank goodness. Okay, and then tuck them in there. Just follow it up as you go round like so, just follow the petal so you get the right shape. I don't put too many on. Like that. There you go. Can you see? It is, it is pretty, isn't it? Look how pretty that is. It's you've painted a lily on a cake. You're so bloody clever and talented. Who said that? <laughs> Few dots, you see. I bet up to that point they're all thinking, well, what is she doing? I'm not sure about this. But look at that. By putting a few little dots on and it's made all the difference. Now, we're going to just change our nozzle to nozzle number one. And we're just going to put a few, she says, hoping she's got one in here, which I have. And we're just going to put a few little extra dots on there. Soften it up a bit, then we're going to put a ribbon on it. Okay, so what we're going to do now is just take some little tiny dots, not very many, just little ones in places, and we're just going to spread them out across the cake. And what that'll do is soften it all up. So a bit of a gypsophilia effect. And if you just kind of gather them around the blossoms, can you see? See what that does there, it softens it all up. It's, do you know what? It's not even the world's biggest effect, but it just makes so much difference immediately. You can actually, if you wanted to, on this, you could just pipe these three here. My hand's probably in the way, but it won't be in a second. You could always just pipe those ones in the middle if you particularly wanted to. So let's just do a few more of these little. I really like kind of doing this sort of loose arrangement of piped. Your cakes get better every week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Angela. Right, let's do the one on the side. Let's turn it around the side now and then we can do the ribbon at the same time. There we go. Get my nozzles out of the way. So as you go round, just do little, this is great for covering up any problem areas. So if you've got anything that you think, oh no, I need to cover that up, it just put a little, pipe a little blob on it. Focus for this is really around the little flowers and up towards the butterflies. Just like little clusters, really. Oh, 
Oh, I've suddenly come off of being on sugar and crumbs. I'm now Kelly again. Are you? Oh, how's that happened? I don't know. You probably cut me off. <laughs> okay, there we go. So put a few up there as well. So it's just like a little sort of sprinkling of it's almost like um fairy dust. Yeah, fairy dust. Yes, we're putting fairy dust now on Kelly at this point. You were gonna say like pollen or something. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say pollen, I wasn't actually. I was trying to think what to say. I don't think pollen's right, but we'll go with fairy dust, Kelly, if that's what you want. I like little mini pearls or something, I don't know, but I just quite like this effect. It just makes a lot of difference, I think. But we're not sort of piping um, big areas, we're just kind of clumping it around the flowers and the butterflies together. Yeah, it's a very fine nozzle, this nozzle number one, PME number one. We had PME two out earlier, that's what we were using for the, for the centre of the flowers and just getting those kind of stuck down. And then as ever, when I've finished all of this, I will take photographs and I'll put it on Instagram so you can have a little look a bit better to see what's going on. Sometimes it's quite difficult to show you on camera. We've inspired somebody, have we, Kelly? Mm -hmm. It's going to have a go. Have a go at painting lilies and just. Tina says, I say this every week, but I'm I'm going to make this one for my mum's birthday. <laughs> she says it every week. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. I love it. They're getting prettier and prettier. I think that's what's happening. Going through this different phase, you see. Different cakes, different things. And we'll do a few here as well. And then we're nearly at the end of this. And then what we'll do is we'll put ribbon round it. Which, of course, I'm still missing print stick because I haven't found it yet. Not that I've looked either, so that's probably why. So you can see they're in clusters, they're not, I haven't, you know, spread them across. They are in little sort of groups, which I think looks better. Looks more random, doesn't it, Kelly? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it does anyway. Okay, all right. Again, don't go wild with it and overkill it. Wait until you're, I've got rib pink ribbon tonight. Oh, I was going to do a butterfly on the board. Right, I need to do that next when I get glue on my hands. Let me do a butterfly on the board. Not that one though, let's do this one. Okay, so you can use these for the board as well. You suddenly decide you want to make the board inclusive as well. What I'll do is I'll cut it out. Actually, I will put it on now. The dreaded number one, you can tell they're on the Royal Icing course. <laughs> they're all moaning about nozzle number one. It is a lovely nozzle. <laughs> it's just a little bit more challenging when it comes to writing, but we're getting there. We're doing really well. Really well. Okay, so I've got that one there. So then we'll just bend that one up just a little bit like that. And we could just have that on the board then, look like so. So that's the front of the cake. Yeah, so we'll just tuck that in. A little bit of icing on the back. And then we'll just push that like so. Actually, the side of the cake is going to pop that up for us. There we go. So we've got another one on the board as well. Right, let's get some icing on. Or not icing, let's get some glue on, I should say. We'll get this ribbon on. So I'm just going to run my finger around this board edge with some uh, PVA glue. Stand that up. I'm trying to look organised, Kelly. Right, that's the back. So I've gone for pink tonight. So let's go start there. Okay, till the end. And just cut 
that's it. Like so, and then we'll just pop a little bit of glue on the end. There we are. And we have finished. Right, let's turn it around so you can have a little look at it. I'll put it under the other camera again in a second as well. I'm trying not to, I'm trying to look organised here under all of this. Right, let's get rid of that because otherwise I'll end up forgetting to turn that off. There we go. Right, okay. So there we go. Tidy tidy. <laughs> there is uh, Lily and Butterfly Cake for this evening. Do we like... It's very delicate, it's very pretty with this. I'll try and bring it in a bit closer so you can see it. But you can see the butterflies, they're so light and they go really, really well with this cake because it's a blue one, a really nice pale blue one. Um, then you can see exactly what's going on. There you go, it's just pretty, isn't it? There's the lily on the front there. So we use the lily cutter, which we've been using for the cookies tonight to emboss the cake. And that's what we did to mark it on. And that gave us our grounding for being able to then paint onto the cake. Um, we went on and used some wafer paper butterflies, which we used to cut out and put on the cake. We used a little blossom cutter for to put a few extra flowers on as well. And then we just used whipping it up um, in a royal icing form just to put a few little dots on there um, and do that that way. So let's have a look at the top so you can have a better view on top. Let's just move this over here. Hold on, we have to go to... I'm trying to hide my rubbish. <laughs> oh dear. I look at the other camera and think, oh my goodness, I can't move it into that space. Right, there you go. There's the top. All right, so you can see... There's the lily there. That's the top. That's the lily at the bottom there. So that's the bottom part of the lily coming forward here. And then you've got the top one there and then there's a three there like so. So that's how the lily sits. So if you are going to paint it at all or you decide to go ahead of any of this, then just make sure you look at a reference picture um, before you get started with doing your lily so that you end up with it the right way round. Because if you emboss it and it's upside down, you will be cursing yourself <laughs> as I have done many, many times with all anything like this. So just make sure you double check exactly which way around it is before um, you go and do that. So there you go. Right. I'm going to pick it up and I will show you what it looks like. I'm going to hold on tight to it. Let me turn the camera. Hold on. Right. Oh, here we go. Right. There's our cake. Cake of the night. So that's the lily and butterfly cake for this evening. The ribbon's moving because I'm moving my hand against it. But there we go. So you can have a nice little look there on the side. Let me turn that round that way. There you go. Pretty, pretty. And all the butterflies as well make it all look very pretty and very 3D as well. So hopefully that's given you lots of inspiration for those of you that want to have a go at cake painting. <laughs> you know you do. Um, that's where um, I have all my paintbrushes and bits and pieces. Now my lessons are on a different website. They're on this one, which is tracymancakeschool.co.uk. Now that's where you're going to find my online cake painting courses. So if you think that you've had a go at the lily or you've had a go at painting the other flowers, and I know there's a few of you that have had a go and you'd now like to have a go at something else. Can you see the sunflower behind me? That's a new one. Um, that one's up at the moment. So if you want to sign up for that one, that's another new class that's just come up last week. So if you fancy having a go at that, you're very welcome. Um, we've got, oh, tomorrow night we're doing this one. Actually, I nearly forgot about that one. So tomorrow evening I'm painting this one live. There we go. This one is called Lovebirds. Put that up there. Kelly will find you the link. This is a Facebook Live. So if you want to join me for this one tomorrow night, um, it starts at six o'clock and it finishes approximately half past eight. So it's two and a half hours. It's quite a long time. Kelly's just put a link up for you. If you don't want to or you can't make tomorrow evening six till nine, um, then you can just sign up for it and follow the live that goes on there because I'll basically do it live and then you'll be able to go back and just join in as and when you want to um, and do it in your own time. And then you can do it as many times as you like, quite honestly. <laughs> um, so, yeah. It's up to you. You can do it as many times as you like. So that's tomorrow evening. So if you fancy having a go at that, Kelly's just put the link up for you. I'm going to pick my cake up one more time. There we go. 
all done for this evening. So thank you very much for joining me. I will be back again at half past 11 on Sugar and Crumbs on Thursday. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> it's nice to have Kelly back. <laughs> Don't tell Charlotte, though. Um, <laughs> So Charlotte's probably watching now. She's seeing if we're finished or not. Have a lovely evening, everyone. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions, do please go to the website, get in contact. And I'll be more than happy to help you with anything. So take care. Have a lovely evening and I'll see you all on Thursday morning. Bye for now. Bye bye.